We'll do our Pledge of Allegiance. Lena, will you please do that for us? The Pledge of Allegiance. Sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, before we get to the adoption of our agenda um, and the business at hand of our meeting, I uh, absolutely must address yesterday's tragedy. So many of us are intertwined and connected to the Covenant School, either as community neighbors, parents, or members of different faith communities. And of course, we are all devastated for them and the broad impact that it has had on national in general. So first, will you please join me in a quick moment of silence? Thank you. It is now upon us to put those thoughts and actions into preparation. We have to do those thoughts and prayers and do the next best thing. Again, all of us up here on the floor, we have a commitment to children and families, even if those Nashville families do not choose to attend our wonderful public schools. We all have a requirement to them. And if anyone in this town is elected or in an elevated position to care about the issues that affect our city's children, it would be us. It is the school board. So as an organization, MPS will continue to stand ready to lend support however possible. And we are very proud of how MPS quickly became helpers yesterday. But more must be done. Excuse me. We can govern. We can provide policy and procedure. We can purchase all kinds of safety measures to protect our students and staff to um, help protect them against gun violence. But none of those things are going to equal the impact that common sense gun safety laws would do. So though we have the awesome and incredible responsibility of making sure that Nashville students can be successful in their future endeavors, we have to also be acknowledged and meant, we have to be an acknowledgement, excuse me, that we cannot make sure that they have the futures for those endeavors. We cannot legislate for that. The leading cause of death in America for children is, of course, guns. And tragically, the protections that are in place are being reduced as we speak, even though they are widely popular. So, I want us to know that though we are the only advanced nation in the world with this epidemic, we still are refusing to take concrete steps and significantly address the situation. And because of this chosen indecision, schools and our leaders are given the impossible choices on how to protect our children and staff. We are, schools are, the backbone of democracy. We are, ooh, we are the everyday social fabric to our schools and communities. We are a public service. We are important, but our children are so incredibly important. And if our city and if our society and if our nation refuses to protect our schools and our children, then what kind of society are we? I know that is not the truth for Nashville. We are an incredible, intertwined, diverse group of people, and we are so devastated for the Covenant School communities. We are deeply impacted. I know many of us know families there personally, including myself, so I apologize for some of my emotion. But I took an oath to do everything I can to promote and support the advancement of Nashville's students and children. So I will continue to keep fighting for them, and I hope that you can join me in that. So I will now take a deep breath, if you want to give me a minute. And we will move on to the agenda, which is very less dramatic for us. The agenda is stated on our board. 
We do have um, a notice that I need to make sure that we're aware of. And that is not number three, the level three student discipline appeal for student B. That student um, has withdrawn their request. And so, uh, may I have a motion to adopt the agenda with this removal? Thank you so much. Second. Seconded. All right. All in favor? Yes, all in favor. Thank you so much. Again, I appreciate you waiting with me patiently. Um, we are sending a letter to the board there, and I appreciate all the work that was done from our staff and our students, and look forward to hearing more about the greatness of MMPS right now. Dr. Beth. All right, thank you so much, um, Chair Elrod. Good evening, board members um, and everyone who is in attendance this evening. Um, before I begin my comments as superintendent, um, let me start by speaking mother to mother, parent to parent, and Nashvillian to Nashvillian. I too grieve deeply for those six souls who died yesterday and cannot fathom the pain for their families. There were three nine-year-old children who won't get to grow up with their friends or make new ones, won't get to love and be loved by their parents and siblings and grandparents, won't get to have thousands of interesting and fun and character-building experiences, and won't get to become the people they had infinite potential to become. And then there were three adults, three educators and staff members who were still in the prime of their lives with plenty of life to live and plenty of love to live. These could have been our students. They could have been our principals, our teachers, our support staff. So there's a great deal to process here, a tremendous amount of horror and sadness to contend with. When I send my son to school, I join in the silent unison with the prayers and safe wishes of my fellow parents. I'm filled with emotion greeting my children at the end of the day, and my heart aches for every family member who was forced to process this tragedy for their child. Speaking as a superintendent, we join with the entire educational community in Nashville in offering as much support as possible. Unfortunately, because of so many previous events nationally, we're in constant state of preparing for this action to come to our doorstep. And we're doing everything we can to keep our own community safe. We are especially grateful for our close collaboration with Chief Drake and Chief Swan. And I'm thankful for the individual and collective actions of the team who responded swiftly to help our neighbors. Our operations team who drove buses and offered security assistance. Our counselors who helped students and families at the reunification center. Our security team who deployed their entire department yesterday. In these moments, we are reminded that we are one Nashville, no matter our school designation. To the MMPS teachers, school counselors, social workers and staff, parents, community, I sincerely appreciate you, how you have once again found a way to talk to and support our students. I know you will continue to do everything you can to support our students in their grief, their confusion, and the trauma. Principals and other leadership, thank you for supporting adults who are also grieving in addition to caring for students. And as I encourage you yesterday, taking care of yourselves. It is not natural that we are forced into these conversations. But we will, we will continue to have these conversations and we will continue to confront our grief. We will also recognize that there is so much good in this world and each other. Most of all, there is so much good in our young people. We had long planned to recognize the brilliance and excellence of our students tonight. Perhaps now, we have even more of a reason to do so. We need to let the, our students know that we love them and that we are so proud of them. So as we move to a moment of recognition, more now than ever, Please join me in honoring our students today and every day. So tonight, as we grieve, we have a lot to celebrate. I'm gonna start first with our National Merit Scholarship finalists. How about that? Just a way to kick it off with a good start. Every year, the National Merit Scholarship Corporation awards college scholarships to some of the nation's very best high school seniors. We have many of them here. National Merit Scholarships go to students based on skills, a 
accomplishments, and potential success in rigorous college studies. And although the scholarships haven't been awarded just yet, simply being named a finalist is a huge honor. It's just 1%. 1% of all high school seniors in the United States receive that recognition. So I am very proud today to say that 15 of those finalists are seniors who are getting ready to graduate from Metro Nashville Public Schools. These students are among the very best you will find anywhere. They are bright, talented, hardworking, determined, and ambitious. So I'm going to call your names in just a moment. Please gather around the podium and face the audience so they can cheer you on and snap a few pictures. And once you all are here, we'll gather up here in front of the board table for a group photo. So let's prepare to cheer them on, smile, hug them as we need to, as we all likely hugged all of our babies extra tight last night. We're going to start, kick off with Hume Fogg Academic Magnet School. Hannah Chen, come on up. Where are you, Hannah? Let's give a round of applause. All right, Roger Chen. Isabella Cruz. Lisa Kim. Benjamin McClarty. Mary O'Reardon. Kevin O. Andrew Pavlik, and Danya Sarvin. All right, don't move yet because we have some other friends from across the way of Martin Luther King Jr. Academic Magnet School who will be joining you. First up, we have Olivia Boer. Come on up, Greg Gomez. All right, next up we have Arnav Mujamdar. Kush Patel. Come on up, Vincent Wang. And last but not least, Lily Sang. <laughs> Students, we are so proud of you and what you've accomplished in your time in Metro National Public Schools. And we cannot wait to see what you do next. So if you all don't mind, I want you to come up here towards the board. We want to take a picture with you so that we have memories and so we can continue to celebrate you. Come on up. Let's give them one more round of applause. any principals or school personnel here, please come on up and join us as well, and school board members. Thank y'all for being here. <laughs> Sometimes we try to get up there on Charlotte's school staff. Get up there first. I like Christian because it's her school. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to stand in the background. <laughs>
Congratulations to all of our National Merit Scholarship finalists, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about your achievements in the years ahead. As we transition, I'm going to uh, move into our wrestling medalists. I'm excited about recognizing five wrestlers from five different high schools who won medals at the recent state championship meet. Students, as I call your names, please come up to the podium, and we'll want to get a group photo afterwards, so please don't go too far away. First, we have Janaya Clemens from Cane Ridge High School. She has softball tonight. So she won the fourth place medal in the girls' 152-pound weight class. This was Janaya's second state medal in her second year of wrestling. I understand Janaya was unable to join us tonight because she's playing in the game for the Cane Ridge High School softball team, but we greatly appreciate her school leadership and coach, um, coach being here tonight to help us celebrate her. Let's give another round of applause for Janaya. our flag football team. All right. I love it. She is busy. Next up, we have Halle um, um, Cox from McGavick, who won fourth place this season. Come on up. So again, our fourth place medalist in the girls' 126-pound weight class. Congratulations. Great work. Another round of applause. Next up is Greg Gomez, a senior from Martin Luther King who won a fifth place medal. In a remarkable accomplishment, Greg is finishing off his high school career with his fifth state medal. And if you think his name sounds familiar from just a few minutes ago, yes. you're right. <laughs> Greg is also one of the National Merit Scholarship finalists we just recognized. So a great example of a strong student athlete. Let's give him another round of applause. All right, next up we have Vivian Maricel from John Overton. Come on up. All right, so we have a runner-up in the girls' 100-pound weight class. Vivian. I have more. Vivian is a two-time medalist whom we may remember from last year when she was the state champion in her class. So congratulations, Vivian. And finally, we have Ethan Martin from Hillwood High School. Ethan, come on down. Ethan was the runner-up in the Class A boys 113-pound weight class. Ethan is also a two-time medalist. Congratulations to all of you who represented us so well in the state championship. One last round of applause for these boys. And like the last group, we'd have, like to have you come up so we can get a group photo.
Also plan to honor Jalen Jones, who is this year's Mr. Basketball for Class 2A from East Nashville Magnet High School. Um, but he wasn't able to join us tonight, so we will save this celebration for another meeting before Jalen graduates. Now I have the honor and privilege of talking about a young scholar I was lucky enough to meet at her school not long ago. Kendall Stowers is a second grader at Ida B. Wells Elementary School in East Nashville who has confronted difficult news in a beautiful way. After Kendall's father passed away just before Christmas, she thought about friends who owned fathers died, had died and started making bracelets for them. When she came back to school from the holiday break in January, Kendall had bracelets for everyone she thought could use a pick-me-up, including her teacher, Katie Liggett. Kendall talked about making dark times brighter and started working with a few of her classmates who helped her with taking and delivering orders. And when I happened to stop by Ms. Liggett's classroom on a recent visit to Ida B. Wells, Kendall said she would like to make me a bracelet too, in memory of my own father. And a few of our other MPS leaders who were with me that day placed an order too. In a time that is often full of darkness, this young lady brings light to those around her. In a time of violence, she brings kindness. Tonight we are honoring Kendall for being a model of kindness, compassion, and friendship. And I believe she has something to present to me. So Kendall and Ms. Liggett and Assistant Principal Brayden, please come on up to the podium. Cheers, left. I'm just trying to take it. I got to shoot. I'm Again, congratulations to Kendall. Kendall, we're rooting for you and here to support you in every way. She is such a good friend and student for helping show others the way as well. Um, well, along with these great students, we have an entire school to honor tonight. Glencliff Entrepreneurship Steam Magnet Elementary School recently was named a National Magnet School of Distinction by Magnet Schools of America. <laughs> Woo! 
Glenn Cliff's motto is we see the light, which supports the four C's of 21st century skills, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. The school has embedded the theme of entrepreneurship in every classroom, and students use the entrepreneurial design process across all subjects to ask questions, to imagine, plan, create, improve, and share solutions. Students also can take part in a daily news production in a state-of-the-art broadcasting studio, an annual Shark Tank invention competition and innovation station, an incubator lab, and more opportunities to learn in relevant and engaging ways. Glencliff Elementary is a, is a shining example of the great education our schools provide to so many students across Nashville and Davidson County. So we say a big congratulations and thank you tonight to Glencliff Principal Dr. Julie Hopkins and her entire leadership team, faculty, support staff, community partners, students, families on this wonderful accomplish, accomplishment and a job very well done. Let's give Give it up for Glenn Cliff, Dr. Hawkins. My district. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all those great treats you bring to our school too. <laughs> All right, and finally, I have a brief recognition of our very own student board member, Ebenezer Hale. He didn't know this was happening tonight. <laughs> recently participated in the Tennessee School Board's Association Student Congress on Policies and Education Conference, joining more than 250 other high school students from across the state. After many discussions and meetings, including mock school board meetings, Ebenezer's small group chose him to represent them in a debate in front of the entire Student Congress. And to no one's surprise here, he won the debate. <laughs> Congratulations, Ebenezer. We will save your photo opportunity for another board meeting closer to your graduation, but we wanted to go ahead and say thank you for representing us so well once again. Um, so congratulations. Um, Y'all are just great examples of student leaders across um, the district. We appreciate you and we want to uplift you and value you every time we get a chance. So congratulations. And um, Chair Elrod, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much. Um, it is always such a joy to hear about the goodness in our schools. We know that this is just a small sampling of the everyday goodness that happens across all of our schools and all grade bands. So I appreciate the students that made time to be here, particularly considering the amount of different activities they were in. My goodness, our kids are busy and great. So I really appreciate it, and uh, we are going to move on to public participation. On the screen, we're going to have the names of our two people that are signed up for public participation. You have three minutes. You can see the timer up there. There's also a very handy bell. Um, and so we will have the three minutes at the end of your three minutes. The bell will ring. Ding. 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 No we, we may not. I have made a mistake. It appears the bell has gone. Be human. The bell is missing and is now a human bell. <laughs> Sounds to be determined. Sound is to be determined. Thank you so much. So we will have our three minutes. At the end of the three minutes, you will hear a sound. And that will notify you that your three minutes is up. So I appreciate y'all for being here as well. So the first we have is Ashley Morgan to speak about ESSER funds, which we just discussed, of course, in our budget meeting. And again, I appreciate y'all being willing to have us go over to this meeting for that. Okay. The next one is Risha Brown, also here to speak on ESSER funds. Okay, I believe neither of those people are here. So we will close the public participation since they do not appear to be here and move on to our uh, governance issues ahead of us. Okay. Um, we have 
uh, moved and adopted the agenda. In case you were not aware, we have removed it to move off or take off number three on the third part of the agenda. But first, we're going to talk about our consent agenda. So, um, if there, we have adopted the agenda as listed. Um, and may I have a motion for the consent agenda? Move the move approval. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the consent agenda. Okay. So we have a first and a second. Um, do we have any discussion? All right. All those in favor? All right. We have eight. All those opposed? I see Cheryl. You opposed? Well, no. Um, considering discussion on one item, but go ahead. I think I have my... Yes, I... Okay. <laughs> okay, it was good. So we've moved on for discussion, so I apologize. Okay, so we have... I'm going to ask one more time just to make sure that we're clear on the votes on that. So for the consent agenda, all those in favor of, of it, please raise your hand. Thank you so much. Now it is everybody. Um, that moves us on to number two, which is a level three student discipline appeal. Before we discuss it, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Justin Marsh to make sure that he can give us a review if needed and, of course, answer any questions before we have discussion. I'm going to let him get down here. Um, so before before the board today, it would be a... Uh, She's asking when, I, when I'm doing the motion, and I'm saying after you. I apologize. Um, before the board today would be the board's decision whether to move this item to a hearing or whether the board wanted to uh, proceed forward on the record. Um, and, with, and if the board chose to proceed forward on the record, it would be a decision whether to affirm, then there would be a decision whether to affirm or over, overturn the decision of the level two a hearing officer. Um, are there any other questions I can answer for the board? Okay. Before we can answer those questions or ask those questions, we first need to have a motion. So do we have a motion to uphold the level two hearing results or to grant the level three hearing? Either one of those. I move to grant the level three hearing. Second. Do we have any discussion? I would just say I typically ask that we consider reviewing because this, we are part of the democratic process. Uh, that does not mean that our professionals and our staff have not done their job, but the idea that a, a student or an educator has a chance to speak before us to plead their case, I think is always reasonable. So with that, can I call for the question? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, call for the question. All those in favor of granting a level three hearing, please raise your hand. All right, that's unanimous as well. I appreciate it. Just for clarification, my office and the board's office will work to find acceptable dates for everyone. Okay, thank you. All right. Again, number three was moved off of our calendar. That brings us to our board committee reports. We had um, a couple committees this afternoon. The first one was governance. Ms. Mays, would you like to provide that quick overview? Yes, absolutely. Super quick overview. We met this afternoon to discuss uh, the re a revision on policy 6.3041, Title IX, and sexual harassment. Uh, the uh, board approved a revision to the policy to remove the name of a former employee and add the title and email contact. It was uh, unanimously approved uh, in committee. Thank you so much. We then had a teaching and learning committee to go over our math adoption, which we just approved in our consent agenda. But Ms. Tyler, will you please provide us any overview that's needed? Um, we were just we just had an overview of how the process and, and the steps that were taken, and the depth and the thoroughness, and in which our teachers and staff engaged in this particular math materials adoption. So um, I urge you, if you have questions, to go back and watch that because a lot of them will be answered there. Very thorough. And then lastly, we had a budget committee that did go over into this meeting. We are grateful for the question. So, Ms. Player, do you have a... Um, as, we, as probably most of you have sat through um, 
the meeting. Uh, we have started our budget process. We will um, pass aspirational budget next uh, meeting on April 11th. Um, go through the agenda to look for information, um, and then we'll begin the rest of our budget process after the mayor submits his budget and approved by council. We will come back and reconcile an actual budget in June. I would like to add to that again um, for my board colleagues to please review the addendum that's attached to it that has greater detail of it, each individual piece. We will have some additional times for questions and answers and of course there's upcoming community meetings to this week and to next week that are very much open to the staff. We would love to have you. That's why we're doing them. So please come to them so you can be informed on what the budget is, what the aspirational budget process is, and of course so you can have your voice be heard by those inside your school and of course your elected officials on what you think needs to be prioritized prioritized inside of our schools and how we might be able to assist you in that and what kind of services we are providing. So again, please come to our community meetings. They start tomorrow. All right. That um, brings us to our announcements. Uh, Given the circumstances surrounding yesterday, uh, I know that we want to uh, get to our families, a lot of our staff, and uh, spend time with them. So before we adjourn, I would like to center our time right now and give space to our student board members to provide student perspective from yesterday. And so we are going to start with our junior board member. Good evening, everyone. Um, yesterday, I was at Hillsborough High School where we were abruptly put on lockdown due to a possible threat in the community. As I looked out my classroom window, I saw at least 50 police cars speed down Hillsborough Road, and then ambulances sped by. There's no other way to describe the feeling of seeing that many police cars except for surreal. We went on Twitter, we kept refreshing, trying to see if anyone knew what was going on, and at first there was very little news, nobody was reporting anything, but then we heard, and those ambulances sped back towards the hospital, and then school buses full of children passed by. Barely a mile away from us, the unthinkable happened, and we are forever scarred. This situation is so traumatic for students all across Nashville. My heart aches for those families and the Covenant community as a whole. My sincerest thoughts and prayers are with you. But thoughts and prayers are not enough. And if this is not a wake-up call, I do not know what is. Our most vulnerable citizens deserve to learn, and they deserve to live. These tragedies will never be normal. Keeping children safe is not political. It is the duty of each and every adult in this country. So now more than ever, we need to come together and make change. If you have the power to make change and instead sit back and remain complicit, do better. Please understand that our city is heartbroken. Schools should be the safest place for a child to be, and no other families should ever have to experience losing a child in such a despicable way. So I beg all of our community leaders to never let this happen again. Thank you. Our board member. Thank you. Um, when, when I woke up this morning and, and I realized that I had a board meeting today, the first feeling that I got was this, this sense of responsibility to say something, to at least, at the very least, address, address students and, and, and say everything is going to be okay. But throughout the day, I felt like I couldn't really come up with anything. I couldn't put pen to paper and say, oh, I should say this. I couldn't list out bullet points like I usually do. And I, I tried to talk to my friends. I tried to, I even asked my principal, what can I say that, that would mean something, that wouldn't feel like another, another person on TV saying something else. And I, I got the same response, which was, what can you say that hasn't been already said? But it, I felt like the whole day, every single person I looked at while walking through the hallway, I could see this, I could see something that I, I've never seen before, and that was fear. I've, I've never thought that I would see fear in the students' eyes while I passed them in the hallways. And, and I go to a school that also includes seventh and eighth graders, so seeing people that 
are 12 and 13 year olds and I that have backpacks that they they can barely hold and and seeing fear in their eyes and and seeing seniors say well at least I'm graduating I'll be safer then hearing all of that creates this this mix of emotions that I just possibly couldn't handle and but the one thing I did realize was that it's in moments like this when as students we feel like the people that we look up to to protect us the people that constantly use our names to, to get to that powerful seat that they covet so much when they give up on us it's that's when we have to truly look out for each other and the one I guess a horrible way to say it, but the one good thing I saw come out of this was that I was having friends check up on me and I was having this push to check up on my friends and I was having teachers that were you know texting me if they had my phone number or sending mass emails telling us how much they love us and how much if it does feel like the bad in the world is getting overwhelming, there's still some good, and that good lies within us. And the best thing I can do is, I guess, use this time that I've received and this, and this voice that I have and say that now is the time to, to show how much love you have. Now is the time to, to look at one another and see yourself within them and, and say the words that you wish someone would say to you because you would feel like the label that you receive as a student is being politicalized and, and it's being used as a weapon, but in reality... I mean, we're just kids, and we, it's, it's impossible not to feel frustrated, but to at least focus on that word, that word of love, and use that love to nurture one another, especially when you feel like that love is running out. Thank you. Thank you so much to both of you for preparing for that. Be there no further business. This meeting is adjourned. service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.